Hey, what's up? It's Nicola Milan, and today I am going to share my top five songwriting strategies for complete beginner songwriters. Even if you have never written a song before and you're a total newbie, this is the video for you. These five strategies are going to help you get rid of that whole, oh, I never know where to start kind of problem and the whole, oh, I never finish a song problem. Uh, and they'll make the whole process just a little bit easier. It's also designed that if you want to write your own song along with the video, you can and just pause as you're writing your bits and pieces. Um, and who knows, by the end of the video, you could have your very first or whatever brand new song. Let's get started. Step number one ideas what are you going to write your song about the trick is is to never start with a blank page there is nothing that kills the imagination and creativity more than staring at a blank page or like going from scratch with no reference points whatsoever and this goes for any creative art form by the way i do this with my art i always get a couple of reference pictures from pinterest before I start drawing anything. It's the same thing for writers. It's the same thing for dancers. You're looking at other people's work first to help you get some ideas and decide what kind of song you want to write. For music, there are several reference points that I have to do this. And the first one is Spotify. So the way I do it is I go into the app. I will create a playlist uh, that I will dump any cool songs that I like the sound of into and I will, um, you know, when I put them in, I kind of think, okay, this is a groove that I like, or, oh, I just really like the vibe of this song. And I kind of just tend to remember that when I'm going through um, this playlist. I don't put a whole heap in there. Uh, I like to keep it pretty fresh. So straight away, when I'm thinking of what song am I gonna write, if I've got no idea, I can automatically go to my playlist and have a listen to some songs and get an idea of the vibe that was inspiring me before. The second way I keep references is I use my iPhone. So I record voice memos into this thing and I have so many of these. It's kind of getting to the point where I should probably go through it and clean it out. Uh, sometimes I do that, I go through and I listen to some of the songs um, that I've kind of started writing or snippets that I've written, I've kind of dumped into this thing and I think about how crap they were and whether to keep them or whether they were actually good and they can become a new song. <laughs> yeah, see that, that has to go. All right, this one's got new song. Let's have a listen to this. I, I like that one, so I may actually keep that and work on it. Let's try Winter's Call. Sometimes you have to listen to it a little bit to see what you were thinking. Oh, obviously I was concentrating on that pattern, maybe. I'm not sure about that one. Um, let's try one more. This one says rhythm. Ah, okay, there we go. So obviously Winter's Call was me screwing around with it and then I've decided actually that's the bit that I like and I've now got this kind of little rhythmy riff thing that I can now use if I want to start working with it. It's kind of cool, I might, might use that later. The next reference, which is great for lyrics, is Pinterest. Now I go to Pinterest and I look for poems or rhymes or even just pictures, you know, that have some words in it Sometimes, you know, I like those, um, those ones where they have like a, a retro picture of a chick and then it's got like, you know, I don't drink anymore, I don't drink any less either. Uh, you know, these kind of catchy phrases and things. And they just kind of spark off ideas. And as you're reading through, just go with a pen and paper and just write stuff. Like, you don't have to necessarily copy a line, 
but sometimes something or even just part of something that you read will inspire a lyric that you can use to begin your song with. Okay, to give you a bit more of an in-depth idea of how this kind of works, I like to go to these uh, retro pictures where they've got, you know, retro pictures with words. Cruel Touch, I kind of like that one because it, it could be about, um, I mean, it's got a picture of a girl, but this could be about a guy, you know. Um, something about him is quite cruel, so he loves you, but then his touch is cruel or his words are cruel. So um, everything he does says that he loves you, but then his words are cruel or vice versa. Um, oh, yeah, come and be my slave. <laughs> but this this actually doesn't have to be kind of about a sort of sexual thing. This could be something like come and be my slave. Um, be like you enslave people when you're in a relationship because that's the type of person, toxic kind of personality that you have. Or it could be just a really fun tongue-in-cheek kind of song. That could be fun too. Uh, on the flip side, you could do, you know, this take care of me thing or I'll take care of you. That could be the message of the song. You know, even if you're down and out, I'll be there to take care of you. Or if I'm down and out, will you be there to take care of me? Uh, you could flip it. So think about the different aspects that that might uh, come across in a relationship. You know, what does death do us part really mean? Mm, let's see what else there is. Oh, yeah, No Empty Bed for Her. I kind of like that one. I actually did a song uh, around that sort of theme, actually, because uh, it was about um, an empty bed and empty hands, and I begin to understand. And that was because you're having, like, relationship problems, and then one thing that signifies relationship problems is sleeping alone. Uh, so an, a kind of cryptic way of saying, you know, you slept somewhere else last night is, like, an empty bed. All, all of these words just kind of might inspire something or help you to think of different angles when it comes to aspects of life. And the last reference for getting ideas for what to write for your song is ChatGPT or any large language program. So the idea is you do not want to ask it to write the lyrics for you because not only will it spit out crap, but uh, it's also not copyrightable. Remember that. Mm. And, you know, you want to be able to write something from the heart, not something, and something that means something to you, because that's kind of the essence of songwriting, right? You don't want to just regurgitate something that AI has created for you. It takes the humanity out of songwriting, and no one wants that. Okay, so now we're inside ChatGPT, so I'm going to ask it for some ideas on... Oh, let's just talk about loneliness. So, uh, what are some theme some themes I could write a song about um, around the idea of loneliness? Let's just see what it comes up. Writing a song about loneliness can be deeply evocative and resonant. Here are some ideas. Okay, so let's see what it says. Isolation in a crowded place. Yeah, that's, that's true. You'd be surrounded by people and alone, longing for connection, reflections on past relationships. Ooh. Um, digital isolation, estrangement from society. I actually, I like this one, um, reflections on past relationships. So looking back on past friendships or romantic relationships that have ended. Um, yeah, I love that. Maybe like having lost someone. Uh, so I like the idea of writing about someone you have lost. Can you come up with some, I don't know, uh, ideas on this, please? I always write please. I'm like really polite to chat. <laughs> Let's see what this says. Writing about someone you have lost can be a poignant way to express grief. Memory lane. Unsaid, ooh unsaid words, legacy left behind, conversations with the absent. Conversations with the absent could be cool. You know, it's like when you talk, you talk to them even though they're gone. Oh, I actually really like that. Let's see, this is kind of giving me my idea already. Conversations with the absent. So I like the idea of talking um, to somebody like they're, they're still there but they're not actually there. So if, you, you know, the concept of the song is that you're like, hey, you remember that time that we blah, 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 you did this, I said this. 
um, but it's been so many years, and then suddenly, you know, the audience realises that this person you're talking about is actually gone, and that can be quite a twist to the song, um, and that can really actually be quite emotive. Yeah, I like that. So this is kind of basically, it gave me an idea in two seconds. You can use this to come up with a gazillion different ideas um, just from doing something as simple as that. It was like two seconds and it gave me heaps of ideas. And to take this idea of creating references to give you ideas for songs one step further, professional songwriters will often be given a brief. And on the brief, it will say, okay, we need like a bossa nova and it has to have these lyrics uh, and this particular mood, like because you're usually writing it for something, whether it be for an advert or a film or whatever, um, or for another singer. So you, you've kind of got the parameters of their vocal range that you have to work within and we need it by X date. So suddenly you've got a whole bunch of different parameters that you have to write your song within. And that can really, really help because you've already been given your genre of music, the style, so you already know kind of which direction you're going to go. They may have given you a lyric, which kind of helps you to center the song straight away. And you've got a time limit as well, which is super important for songwriting. You don't want to kind of give yourself an open time slot because that's when you get into the whole overthinking things and never finishing songs scenario. Say, okay, I'm going to write for an hour, absolute max, and at the end of the hour, you know, you want to have written the verse and the bridge. And the thing is, is that the more you do it, the better you become at it, and the less attached to songs you become. So you, you can actually start churning them out a lot quicker. So to summarize, never start with a blank page, always get yourself some references first, so you know which direction you're going with your songwriting. Strategy number two is to pick a well-known chord progression. So you can't think of a chord as a single chord, right? Because how often do you get a song that just has one chord? I mean, it is possible, but it'd be pretty boring. Like if you were just like, this is my whole song. This is just C major seven. La 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 You know, it's kind of like, come on, give us another chord, right? You never get chords by themselves. They come in families, right? And this, it can get really complicated with, you know, all of the whole harmony kind of thing. But to keep it simple, there are groups of chords that just go like magic together. For example, uh, 1625, which is one that is found commonly in jazz that I love. It's, um, okay, let's just go uh, 1, 6, minor 6, and then 2, minor 2, and then 5, and then 1. So this was Blue Moon. You saw me standing alone without a dream in my heart. And then I used this chord progression as well when I was doing my speed songwriting challenge a couple of weeks ago and I wrote uh, a song with this chord progression. Kiss me underneath the Christmas tree, honey, where all the lights are twink, twinkling all around. Whatever I did, I, know, I can't remember. But you know, I basically used this common chord progression because it was an easy starting point. So in pop music, there's this magic chord progression, was it one, five, six, four, that has like a gazillion songs that use it. Um, Can you feel the love tonight? And I was a, I come from the land down under. When I fall There's a gazillion songs. So when you're first starting out with your songwriting, pick an easy chord progression.
So the trick is, once you've picked your chord progression, that's when you can start noodling, if you want, if you like writing that way. La 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 I'm just making this up on the spot. Or if I try something different. La 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 Try something else. La 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 Okay, let's play it a different way. You know, whatever, right? I'm just noodling, making it up. And you can just have a go that way and see what happens. Strategy number three is to use a common song structure. So song structures are great because they give you a map of how much you need to write and what goes where within your song to keep the, in, the, or the, you know, the listener interested and to also add enough repetition and enough variety in your song so that it sounds good as a whole. The other thing that they're great for is that it shows you how much music you actually need to come up with. So you don't need to write endless bars of music when you're writing a song because they have to have quite a bit of repetition, right? Um, and so let's have a look. This is a common pop chord progression. So you've got verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chuck in a bridge, chorus, chorus, right? But if you have a look at it, you've only got three different aspects in there. You've got a verse, you've got a chorus, and then you've got a bridge. So considering that most songs run on between four and eight bars, let's just say eight bars per verse, you've got one lot of eight bars to write for a verse, one lot of eight bars to write for a chorus, and then either four or eight bars to write for your um, bridge. And that's all you need to write. You don't need to write endless amounts of music. And then you just repeat the sections where it says to repeat them in the song structure and everything just flows and it sounds interesting, it sounds nice and it means that you don't have to write much music at all. I mean look at Sting's, what was it, Fields of Gold? I think it's like, um, or Scarborough Fair, that's a super easy one. It's just A, 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 It's like one bar of so eight bars or something repeated over and over and over again. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Harshly said, just maybe in time. Remember me for one who lived there. She once was a true love of mine. And then you repeat it. To make me a Canberra chain. You know what I mean? And it's enough of a melody to keep people interested. But you can just repeat it over and over again. And that's what I think Sting's Fields of Gold does. It just repeats A, 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 chucks in a B, and then A, A, A <laughs> again. And it makes for a good song. Oh, and by the way, when you're writing in this form, you don't have to work in a linear fashion either. So if you start writing what you think might be a verse and it ends up being like the catchiest part of the song, just use it as the chorus, you know, and then write the verse later. Some people like to start with the chorus as well. Some people like to start with the verse. All right, strategy number four is pick a groove. So if you've, you've kind of got your song structure and you've got your chords, right? But you're kind of like, oh, mm. it sounds like every other song in the world and you'd probably be right. <laughs> so what is the defining characteristic of a lot of these songs? What makes them different? A lot of the time it could just come down to groove. It also comes down to the instruments that you pretend you use at the end to record it, but a lot of the time it just comes down to groove. So this is where you can have fun and you know your references also come in handy here. You're like, okay, I want to do like a bluesy version of this. So So 
it's kind of like, I mean, that was, that was kind of more the way I played it than groove. But okay, so to demonstrate this even better, I'm going to use the grooves here on my piano. And we're going to put on a bossa nova groove and we're going to play our chord progression over our song structure with a bossa nova groove and see what happens. Reggae. Oh, hang on. We said we were going to do bossa, didn't we? This is a nice bossa. Look at that. Let's just choose that one. I go enter and then I can increase my volume. So here we go. This is a really bad bossa nova. <laughs> Alright, so. struggling and you want to try and find, find that thing that kind of makes it a little bit different add a groove get a little drum beat going there's heaps of apps that you can get and download that just kind of do like a gazillion and one drum samples and you can like increase the tempo decrease the tempo changes the whole feel of the song the only thing that limits you is how well you can play and that is something I'm currently working on all right Step number five, my friends, is probably one of the most important steps in the entire process. And yes, it is lyrics. We are singers, like if you're watching this, you're probably a singer that wants to write. Um, and, you know, where do we come up with these lyrics? I mean, there are some songwriters that just write music and some lyricists that just write lyrics. lyrics. But you want to kind of be able to do both, right? It just kind of means it's just, I find it just easier. Um, and you can do it any kind of way. You can write lyrics first, you can write the music first, you can try and pair them together, whatever. I like to write things at the same time. The reason is, is because when I've written instrumentals, I find that the way that I create the melody line on the piano doesn't quite suit the voice. It suits the instrument that I've written it for on, on you know what I mean? And so if I write at the same time, the lyrics and the melody, I find that the songs just sound better for the voice. They sit within the range better and they, they have, they just, it just works smooth, more smooth. So my big epic piece of advice here for lyrics is to go for the most cliche crappiest lyrics that you can think of, dump them in and fix them up later. <laughs> because this is where we get stuck. We tend to overthink, right? You've, you've kind of got your chord progression now. You've got your groove. Everything's kind of sounding cool. You've kind of noodled and you've got this melody, but then you get stuck on the lyrics. So if you use the stuff that rhymes and sounds cheesy, um, let's go back to our bossa nova. Um, Everywhere you go, uh, it starts to snow. I love the way you look in the morning. I'm <laughs> just making this up on the spot, right? It's crap lyrics. But the thing is, is I'm getting something down. And I mean, yes, you can come up with an idea of kind of what you want to write first. And we'll go through that in a second. But if you still have no idea and you're stuck with lyrics, that's one way to get started. It's just make it up, go for something super cheesy and corny and crap and that's what I did for my Christmas song that I wrote in 15 minutes. I went for the most, I mean yes it's Christmas and Christmas songs generally cheesy but I went for the cheesiest song lyrics I could think of that just popped into my head and then I kind of fixed them up a little bit later. Okay here are a few refining strategies when it comes to lyrics. Rhyming. So the trick to rhyming with brilliance is to not go for the obvious rhyme all the time. See what I did there? Don't go for the obvious rhyme all the time. 
in line. It's fine. <laughs> um, otherwise it just sounds ridiculous. Having things that kind of go, but don't 100% rhyme is the key to having things sound less corny. So one way to find rhyming words, for example, that will really help with this strategy is I kind of go off up the alphabet, right? So let's just say um, cat is my word that I need to find a rhyming word for. So I'll go at, bat, cat, dat, fat, what was it, hat, jack, jat, jack, jat, jack, cat, jack, hat. Yeah, actually jack kind of works because cat and jack don't 100% rhyme, do you hear that? But jat and cat, do, but Jat's not really a word, I don't think, unless it is in some weird language somewhere. Um, but Jack and Cat are close enough, but don't 100% rhyme. So those would be a really good match to use, you know. Uh, I had a cat, its name was Jack. <laughs> kind of get the picture right. One other refining strategy for coming up with lyrics is to think of it in terms of a story. So you've got a character and what's this character doing? And I actually did this for my recent uh, release, single release, Old House. I, I came up with the story of a woman who has lived her whole life by the sea. So she lives in this crappy little beach house but she's living, she's so happy because she's living in a place that she loves with the man that she loves, right? She doesn't need anything else. And that, that's the story and it spans her whole life. So we've kind of got a time parameter here to work within. So you've got, you know, what happened, you know, when they first met and then you kind of like zoom forward, fast forward in the song and then it kind of like turns into herself when she's a lot older because we're trying to talk about an entire life. And what's happened when she's an older woman and you can kind of talk about the story that way um, and I've done this with friends I wrote one uh, with a friend and we were talking about a girl who snuck out of her house at night to go to this party and it was kind of like this quirky song I can't even remember it now but we were like okay so is she creeping down the stairs or is she gonna go out the window you know is she what she, is she gonna get to the party or is it all about her escaping this house you know, and it kind of gives you a bit more of a parameter and a time frame and ways to think about the lyrics like that. And that can really help you come up with your song lyrics to think about things in terms of stories. One other really great way of coming up with lyrics, and I use this one a lot, is I will sit down with friends. They think I'm being this like really good friend and listening to them, but really I'm using them for song lyrics. <laughs> Um, I used to do this a lot with uh, Michael, the producer that I used to work with in Sydney. Um, and so I'd be like, hi Michael, how are you going? You know, and we'd have a catch up. And then I'd sit there with my notepad and pen. I'd be like, how's the relationship situation go? And he would pour his heart out. And I'd be like, this is great. <laughs> you know, writing like, all of these lyrics down and like just snippets of things that they said. And I did this actually once with a friend. She came up with a beautiful line that I've actually never used. So, you know, this is open for use right now people she was like oh i feel like i keep getting into these relationships and then i end up like this uh, so fragile I end up like this broken little bird at the end of them and i'm like oh that's a great line broken bird and i'm like you know that gives you the, the the kind of like the context so we're talking about relationships here and then how did you become broken and then you must be quite small and fragile and then is there gonna be someone that fixes you up and lets you fly away? Or is there gonna be someone that keeps you in a cage? Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh the metaphors um, tingles me. It's, uh, you know, and that whole, that's the, that's, the, that's the title of the song, Broken Bird, right there. So you, sometimes you can come up with just one choice little bit that just sets the whole song and of lyrics to light. So those are my five strategies for songwriting if you're completely new at songwriting 
It just makes it a lot easier, structures it all for you, make sure your song's got enough repetition, enough rise and fall, enough interest to keep people listening, the, the chords are all flowing happily from one to another, they're not sounding a bit off, and you, oh, you know, the worst thing is like when you get these songwriters, the new songwriters, and they're just doing this. And then it's like the back, back again, you know, and it's like just C to G. And then it just repeats over and over and over and over and freaking over and everybody's bored and I'm like, can you please chuck in another chord? And then maybe after like bar 24, they'll chuck in an R and you're like, oh, thank God, my ears, oh, thank God. And then it'll be back to, again, I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. So by using these tools, straight away you eliminate all of that crap. Um, the other thing I will mention, is if you practice this and you do it more often, the easier it becomes, like anything, right? Like you will collect more voice memos, you will collect more songs in that Spotify playlist that you're gonna create. Uh, you will create more lyrics, then just chuck them on a piece of paper or a notebook, like I have a notebook and I use the computer a lot to stash lyrics and poems that I come up with. Um, so these are all sort of food for your songwriting um, and your brain will just start seeing things. It's like, you know, when you're doing that, you know, that spotto game and you're trying to spot those uh, V-Dub Beetle cars and then suddenly they're everywhere. Not anymore. Oh my God, I'm probably showing my age. Teslas. When you're trying to spot Teslas on the road, suddenly they're everywhere. Um, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Your brain just starts picking up songwriting bits and pieces. And the other thing is, is you'll become less emotionally attached to your songs. So a lot of the reason some people don't finish a song is because they're too emotionally attached to it and it doesn't quite feel right. And they're like, oh my God, I need to perfect it before I finish it. Now, stick to these rules, do your verse, chorus, verse, chorus, get to the end of it, write the whole thing, and then tweak it afterwards. And if it's still not a winner, chuck it out and start again. Don't dwell on it. Uh, I think professional songwriters will write up to like 100 plus songs in a year and they may demo 15 or less of those. Uh, I have written quite a few songs that I've just chucked out because they're just, there's no point dwelling on them. You can use them for other stuff later if you want to, but sometimes it's just nice to start fresh. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more vids like this. And if you want some more tips on songwriting in general and singing, um, as well as other music that I'm releasing at all times and other things that I post on this channel, uh, hit me up in the newsletter link below. Talk to you next time.